Okay, so we'll be looking at the morphology of chromosomes in a human karyotype. Uh, and we should be able to explain uh, uh, everything written here after the end of this video. So firstly, hereditary organization, that's eukaryotic chromosomal organization, uh, chromatin functional states, chromosome function, haploid and diploid number, uh, karyotype, homologous chromosomes, ideogram, uh, metaphysic uh, chromosome structure, uh, chromosomes, uh, central male location, um, karyotype analysis, uh, chromosomal analysis, the Denver system, and the examination uh, of sex chromosome number, that is sex determination or sex cell chromatin determination. Okay, so uh, let's get into it. The hereditary information lies in chromosomes, and the chromosome lie in the nucleus. So we have a special term here called chromatin. Chromatin is made up of double-stranded DNA plus histones plus acidic proteins. So histones, histones are basic proteins like base, acid base. So eight basic pro basic proteins. Okay, so the f of x, uh, <laughs> this is function, function of chromatin uh, is RNA synthesis. Uh, so eukaryotic chromosomes level of organization. So this is the level of organization, only three points. Firstly, the DNA plus basic proteins called the histones, they make up nucleosome. So again, nucleosome is made up of DNA plus eight histone, histones or eight basic proteins. The second point is, uh, nucleosomes are organized into large coiled loops held together uh, by non-histone scaffolding proteins. The DNA molecules are much longer than the nuclei or cells that contain them. So the arrangement of DNA into chromosomes allow the DNA to be accurately replicated and segregated into daughter cells without tangling. Okay, let's look at the functional uh, states of the chromatin. Firstly, we have something called extended chromatin. Extended chromatin is called is also called U chromatin. So extended chromosome EC is called is uh, we can memorize it uh, EC here on extended chromosome and EC U chromatin. Okay. So this extended chromatin is not visible under the light microscope during interface. Uh, this is because like the, the chromatin will be scattered throughout the nucleoplasm. And the second, second uh, functional state is called a highly condensed chromatin, also known as the heterochromatin. So this one is visible under light microscope during mitosis and meiosis. Okay, uh, let's get into detail on the uh, heterochromatin. Heterochromatin, again, is a highly condensed portion of chromatin. It is permanently condensed during interface and visible under the light microscope. It is not transcribed to RNA. It appears in light microscope as basic or basic basophilic clamps of nucleoprotein. It is transcriptionally inactive. Okay, so heterochromatin may be structural or facultative. Uh, this the the structural part. Uh, its function is to maintain the structural integrity. Then the facultative heterochromatin, uh, it corresponds or corresponding to one of the two X chromosomes present in the somatic cells of female mammals. So it's shaped like a drumstick uh, when uh, seen under the microscope. Uh, it's also known as the bar body. Now look at, looking at the euchromatin. Euchromatin is uncondensed during interface. It is transcriptionally active and 
it uh, mostly encodes proteins. So this one is uh, is transcriptionally active. Again, this is the very important point. All right. Uh, the functions of chromosomes. Chromosomes carry hereditary information from parents to offspring. They control metabolism by directing formation of necessary enzyme, enzymatic proteins. Uh, chromosomes also undergo mutation, thus contribute to evolution. Uh, chromosomes guide cell differentiation during development. Uh, they bring about continuity of life by replication. And lastly, plays an important role in sex determination. Okay, so let's look at the two terms, haploid and a diploid, haploid number. So it can be sim uh, simplified by the letter N, small n. Uh, so haploid number is a chromosome number in the germ cells. Germ cells are simply sex cells, uh, that's 23 in humans, uh, and they are formed during uh, meiosis. And now a diploid number uh, represented by 2n. Uh, these are, this is chromosome number uh, in somatic cells. It's 46 in humans and is formed uh, during uh, mitosis. All right. Uh, introducing another term again, karyotype. Karyotype is a diploid number of chromosomes with their number and structure. Again, karyotype is a diploid number of chromosomes with their number and structure, meaning to say all the chromosomes uh, like in humans, they have numbers. We have chromosome number one, number two, number three. So there will be that there will be an arrangement of the number and structure, right? Okay. So the human karyotype uh, consists of twenty-two pairs of autosomes and a pair of sex chromosomes, either XX in uh, females or XY in males, making. Uh, making up 46 chromosomes. Again, 22 pairs. This is 44 plus 2, 46. Okay, another theme again. The second one here. Homologous chromosomes. Uh, homologous chromosomes is a pair of chromosomes with the same gene loci in the same order. So loci is just a, 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 it's a, um, a location in the same order. Right. Uh, and the last term here uh, is ideogram. Ideogram is a karyotype which displays chromosomes arranged in pairs in descending size order. So it will be like uh, a picture where the chromosomes will be shown uh, dis uh, like in order of their size from the large to the smallest, right? Okay, so uh, let's look at the metaphasic chromosome structure. So the structure of chromosome during metaphase. Okay. Uh, so here during metaphase, the DNA has already replicated, right? So this is the structure of chromosome. It contains two chromatids. They are called the sister chromatids, one, two, right? They are held together at a point called a central man here all right and on this region we have um a stacks of proteins uh, so uh that those proteins like where are uh, the mitotic or uh, the spindle will will attach is called a kinetocol kinetocol and here uh this spelling should be kinetocol like this all right uh Again, the structure of chromosomes, right? The the, the position of centromain is usually um, it, it varies the in positions. So in a chromosome, the larger part of of uh, of, a chrom of a chromosome is, is uh, uh, defined as the Q the Q the Q part, and the smaller one is called P. So the smaller 
P, the larger Q, right? Uh, and the chromosomes also contain uh, some constriction, constrictions called the secondary constrictions here, uh, where we will find a, a region called uh, satellites, right? On this, um, uh, on these constrictions, and uh, the ends of the chromosome is is called a telomere, right? So this part of the chromosome is called a telomere. This one is in, in green is satellite satellite and this one you can see is a constriction right it's secondary constriction again here you have your central main okay as easy as that uh, so according to the positions of the central main we can classify the uh, the chromosomes right uh, according to the position of this uh, this uh, central may can go to this region or this region or this region or this region, right? So Here uh, I've shown like uh, some some diagrams, right? So the first one is metacentric chromosome The central may divide the chromosome into two equal arms. So these two are called what arms Q and uh, Q and P they are arms so uh in meta metacentric they are equal all right sub metacentric that is if the central may is slightly displaced from from the center of the chromosome okay so we have the uh the acrocentric uh acrocentric is if the central may uh, establishes the one one long arm and one short so here you can see one long and one short is what Acrocentric. Then the last is uh, we have a telocentric. Telocentric. So uh, it is uh, if the chromosome is in the end of the uh, if the syndrome is if the syndrome is in the end of the chromosomes. So we can say it is only one arm. This arm here we have syndrome at the end. Right, that's telocentric. Okay. So let's look at the chromosomal analysis. Uh, we have only five steps, right? Firstly, we need to destroy the mitotic spindle using uh, colchicine, okay? Then secondly, we'll destroy the cellular membranes losing, uh, we'll be using the hypotensive solution. Then uh, third, third step, we do uh, centrifugation of the cells. Then fixation and dyeing of the specimen and then identification uh, and classification of the chromosomes okay uh, so we're going to look at the classification of human chromosomes according to the conference which took place at Denver uh, in 1960 uh, where the chromosomes are grouped into seven groups group A, B, C, D, E, F, G all right so here we have the what the number and the characteristic so we have uh chromosome number one two three is group one uh four five group two uh that's group b uh c to 12 is group c 13 um to 15 is group d 16 to 18 group e 19 to 20 group f 21 um to 22 it's group g that's the last one and uh for the characteristics you can pause the video uh and then uh try to to to, to get the pattern of the i mean of the characteristics okay so other than uh, this method we have uh some other methods like uh we we can do uh one called um fluorescent stains and laser so these ones are the other the the other methods right so let's look at the uh determination of the x chromosome we have a simple formula simple formula which is a is equal to b plus one it's simple just like that where a will be representing the quantity of uh, of x chromosomes b is the bar body then plus one okay so if you want to find the uh 
uh, number of bar bodies. You can just simple uh, do uh, change of subject of, of change of subject of the formula. We can say b is equal to right. Then we we uh, put neg uh, we subtract one from both sides. Right. So b is equal to a minus one.